The story begins rather unusually. It will begin not with the main character, but with the name from the place where you see the IK bank. The main character considers himself a messenger of justice. He broke into the bank to take all the money. In addition to the money, the hero also took the life of one of the visitors, who was against giving his money. After his brutal appearance at the bank, he appeared on the news. Everyone already knew that there was an armed robber in the bank. The envoy killed seven civilians, including bank guards. The guards have now detained him. The defendant, the main character Charlie, is on trial for the indiscriminate killing of innocent civilians, possession of a firearm and bank robbery. The court reads that in connection with all these crimes it cannot accept mitigating circumstances, in which case the hero is sentenced to death. Charlie thinks this is unfair because even criminals who deserve death were not sentenced to death. While the hero was thinking about everything that was happening, the bus was stopped and armed soldiers ran into it. The messenger in the bag thought that death had come faster than he could have thought. But from the outside he heard the opposite. Praise that with such a good security system, he was able to rob the bank. The man, who praised the hero for his courage, offered to release him, remove his criminal record, and return him to society. Charlie was ready to say that this was complete nonsense, but not everyone is able to stop a bus with prisoners and calmly get on and off it. But the hero doesn't care about their abilities. He wants to know the reason for their actions because he doubts that their company is engaged in gratuitous assistance to prisoners sentenced to death. The man, of course, said that there was one condition. Charlie would have to fight a hundred opponents, kill them all, and stay alive. Their office organizes a game in which out of a hundred people only the strongest survives, and the winner gets everything he wants. The head understands that Charlie robbed the bank for a reason, so he offered him ten billion won for victory. The hero has made a decision, which means from now on he is a participant, and his path will be determined straight to hell. After arriving, Charlie found himself in an unknown place and again had a black bag on him. Fortunately for the hero, he is freed by a rather nice girl, who also does not understand who he is. Charlie asked where he was, but the girl said that she herself did not understand. She was also brought without specifying the place. There are many more here who were also caught and sent to the so-called hell. The main kidnapper was displayed on a huge plasma screen and began to slowly explain something. All people are confused by such a sudden movement, so I decided to make it easier by telling the location. But that's probably not the best news. All players are aboard a C-130 military transport aircraft at an altitude of 5,000 feet. And here is the first candidate for victory who is confident in his victory because in his opinion there are only weak bastards around. After some time, the plane will drop players off on an abandoned island and as soon as they land, the game will begin. On the island there are basic necessities, cars, weapons. Players can safely use everything available to kill other participants. And this is the second candidate for victory for whom killing people is a piece of cake, because before he was only involved in murder, his name is Jack, a British killer. The first girl is a candidate for victory. She is glad that there are many celebrities of their criminal world here, but she will have to deal with all of them. She is called the drug dealer, Rena. Renting a bank and staging a fake robbery before being officially sentenced to death was not such a difficult task for the hero, because he did it all on purpose. Charlie's goal is to become one of the participants in the game, he doesn't need some pathetic bank, he needs a real jackpot. And no, he doesn't care about goals. For the hero, one single goal is important, which will become known a little later. At this time, they opened the hatch and asked everyone to put on a parachute. Instructions for use were written on the rope of the parachute bag. From this moment on, a royal battle will begin, where only one will survive. Earlier, before the moment with the plane, the hero met with the director of the National Intelligence Service. Deputy Kim went missing. In particular, he tried his best to solve the case of an illegal game. He found out something and became a problem for criminals, so the hero is the only person who can find him. Therefore, his goal is not some kind of money. He must find Deputy Kim, but also survive in the royal battle. Judging by intelligence information, the deputy should also be somewhere on board the plane. Charlie still managed to spot that same deputy in the crowd of all the savages. The hero could not make a mistake. He wanted to push his way towards him, but he was simply pushed out of the plane. Charlie had come all the way to meet Kim, but in such a stupid way he lost sight of him again. The envoy needs to find the deputy before the others, because he can be killed without warning. But it is almost impossible to survive on this island without weapons and a car. The hero was lucky that he had experience in parachute training, so he landed without any problems. Charlie magically managed to land in a sweet spot at the Sosnovka military base, where there must be weapons and a car. But that's just it. 
It's good for a pistol, but it won't be enough. The very first candidate for victory landed in the same place as the hero. He took the gun faster than Charlie, and it infuriated him. The enemy thought he could easily kill Charlie, but he was able to dodge the bullet, which surprised him. The hero is not as simple as he seemed a little earlier. He is a former Special Forces soldier of the 707 Special Forces Group. Therefore, it is not in his interests to feel sorry for all the criminals left and right. Now there will be one less player. It turns out that there are 98 people left, but more than five people are approaching the hero, as if they knew where the military base was. Charlie won't last long with just one pistol. It will only give away the hero's location. Battle Royale is a survival game in which 100 prisoners sentenced to death are brought to an island and fight until only one remains. Players kill each other to achieve their own goals, as if it were just a game. No one objected because they were all murderers who were sentenced to death, just like the hero, who also killed similar scum. The enemy had nothing but a frying pan. Apparently, those who had weapons had long since hidden in secluded places. In addition to the frying pan, Charlie also purchased a police bulletproof vest and a new P-1911 pistol. Not far from him, the hero heard a running man and immediately took aim. But the enemy turned out to be a girl. This is the same girl from the plane who took off Charlie's bag. She suggested that the hero create a single team among themselves. The girl began to make excuses that she really didn't understand how she ended up here. She never wanted to participate in the game and never gave her consent to anyone. Charlie asked her to keep her stories to herself. The only thing he was interested in was for what purpose she approached him. It's not enough for him that the girl took off the bag. He doesn't understand how he can join the team because the girl doesn't even know how to fight. From time to time, the hero experiences influxes of memories. He remembered the man's words that there may come a time in Charlie's life when he has to point a gun at an innocent person. Then you can doubt as much as you like. The difficulty is what makes the hero human. At that moment, a smoke grenade fell. The hero immediately thought of the girl's trap, but she was no less confused than the hero, which means it wasn't her. The man who threw the grenade turned out to be some kind of crazy bastard. The hero was able to run to the side, avoiding all the bullets. Because of the smoke curtain, nothing can be seen, so Charlie can run unnoticed to another building. Charlie immediately rushes into the building and sees a man jumping below him. There was no time to think, and he instantly eliminated him. Immediately, that psychopath in chemical protection comes running, trying to kill the main character. He is truly an unusual person, different from other scum, because only this type of person can use a smoke grenade for close combat with a shotgun. There is nowhere else to run, and the only way is to try to hide on the roof. The hero had to hide behind a concrete wall. He does not have enough equipment, and with only one pistol, he will not be able to leave the roof alive. But here is a chance for survival, Charlie noticed a motorcycle, but it is too far away and the hero does not know how to control it. All that remains is to kill the enemy, but another hero has appeared on the roof. Charlie jumped from the roof, but there were many players in his area. They all ran to the sound of gunfire. The enemy was behind, and the hero killed him at that very second. But there are more and more players in this location, as if he was lured to a mortally dangerous place. Charlie had no bullets left in his clip. All that was left from his equipment was a frying pan, with which he killed another player. A crazy hero appeared again, who deliberately took Charlie to a remote place in order to calmly deal with him. Before he had time to finish speaking, a girl flew over them on the same motorcycle that the messenger had not run to. The girl shouted to the hero to quickly sit down with her. It turns out that she is not so mediocre. Her name is Pinky, and she is a former motorcycle racer. The hero trusted the girl and jumped on the motorcycle. Now all they have to do is go as far as possible, remaining safe. This trip for Charlie is the most extreme in his life. They move as if through a minefield. The player, in full gear, is amazed by their zest for life and is impressed that the girl controls the motorcycle like a toy. The team drove along the road outside the military base. Charlie does not understand the girl's intentions, why she even saved him. To which the girl replied that a chance meeting could turn out to be fate. Now the hero realized that he would not like to see her die because she saved him. On the way, the team met a house. They decided to take a little rest in it after everything that had happened. Luckily for them, there was a first aid kit in the house. The girl would need it once because she had slightly hurt her ear. The girl asked what they should do next. Charlie first decided to clarify one thing so that she could stand up for herself and gave her the gun. He told her everything that the hero was on the island in order to find one person and to search on such a huge island, he would need the help of an experienced driver. Charlie agreed to join the team, but in an emergency the hero will not have time to protect the girl 
so she can take care of herself with this gun. She gave the gun back because she doesn't know how to use it, but she's glad that their team is starting to trust each other. On the way, the girl asked the hero who he was looking for, but such information was confidential, to which she was upset and thought of throwing the hero on the side of the road. Then Pinky asked his location. The hero realized that he couldn't wander around so blindly. On the way, they again saw a new location, similar to an abandoned roller coaster. The girl suggested that the person the hero was looking for could be here, but it is unlikely that he landed so close. There is no other choice. You will have to comb absolutely the entire island. But there is no one in this town. It is nothing more than a playground and no one lives here. As soon as the girl wanted to relax and said that there wasn't even the sound of a battle, they immediately found one gang and many corpses in the area. Now it became clear why it was so quiet. They walked in a group and the fights ended instantly. It turns out they assembled a team on board the plane. Three people are too many, especially such thugs. They decided that they would quietly return to the bike and leave. They were already about to leave when one of the opponents was not mistaken in the sound of a motorcycle engine and found him. The opponents realized that since the engine was still warm, Charlie's team was somewhere nearby. Charlie knocked out the detective while the gang was distracted searching for the team. They noticed that their friend was suddenly gone and there was noise coming from the hero, so they decided to check the area. The hero grabbed the girl and they ran away from them, otherwise they would have been killed. Now the team does not have a motorcycle, and if they run along an empty road outside the town, they will be easy to shoot, so they hide in buildings and catch opponents one by one. Without a good weapon with just one frying pan, you can't cope with them, and Pinky immediately found a weapon. One of the opponents found the team's hiding place. He believed that they had no weapons since they ran away so quickly. He was very mistaken. As soon as he discovered the hero, an arrow immediately pierced his head. Another enemy was sitting and guarding the motorcycle, but he remembered that there was another girl there with whom they were most likely having fun without him. The hero walked around the player and saw that he had one firearm, an old Soviet light machine gun. If Charlie couldn't kill him first, he would be torn to pieces by the overwhelming firepower. In order for the hero to cope with two opponents, he will need Pinky's help. Charlie does not have much experience with a crossbow, so he cannot guarantee good shooting. The messenger decided not to hesitate and aimed at the enemy, but hit over his head as expected. Everything did not go according to plan, and they started firing at him with a machine gun, but he managed to dodge the bullets and escape. Charlie made a tackle to avoid being hit, but a fat man with a huge machete jumped out to meet him. The fat man was already happy that he could easily deal with the hero, but he missed the crossbow with the machete. The hero managed to get an arrow and stuck it straight into the enemy's kneecap. Charlie was just beginning to think that there was the last enemy left when he found himself behind him. The enemy forgot about the secret weapon, about Pinky, who flew into him with speed. The fat man was the only survivor. Until that moment, everything was going very smoothly for him. But everything suddenly changed. He was sentenced to life in prison several times for kidnapping women, but received a chance to participate in the battle royal. The fat man was lucky to team up with people from the same prison. The four of them easily dealt with other players. The girl asked what they would do next. The hero said that first he would talk to the enemy, Charlie asked if he had seen a Korean politician on board the plane, but he didn't even know who he was talking about. It turned out that he was not in the know, so it was not worth leaving him alive. Pinky stopped the hero from killing the defenseless wounded player. The girl said that he no longer wants to fight, so there is no need to kill him. It is not necessary. She was wrong. The enemy had already begun to think about how he would deal with their team as soon as he was released. At that same second, Charlie made a hole in his opponent's head, not giving him a chance to live. Charlie warned the girl not to do such stupid things again, otherwise he would kill her right there. It began to get dark outside. The team decided to spend the night in the village in a secluded place. The hero fell asleep almost immediately. The girl did not doubt her convictions. The hero is no different from the prisoners. Finally, she asked for forgiveness, because she was not honest in her words when she said that she did not know why she ended up in the royal battle. In fact, she knows the reason, and it is the same as everyone else present. Pinky turned out to be one of the criminals who killed people. When the kicks were aimed at the hero's head, he woke up and opened his eyes slightly and had already prepared a pistol behind his back. Pinky had a small, happy family. Her parents always took care of her. They always supported the girl, even when she decided to connect her profession with motorcycle racing. But the gang took away the girl's most precious thing, her parents, and she considers this mourning her fault. She just wanted to stand up for the girl in the alley but she never thought that they would come for her and break into the house. 
From that day on, Pinky promised her parents that she would definitely take revenge for their death and would lock up the bastards at any cost. But no, spending several years in prison and getting out with nothing happened is not enough. That is why the girl became a killer. Seven people died at her hands that day. It was not for nothing that Charlie doubted his communication skills. He was not good at working in a team at all. The hero knocked the girl down with lightning speed. He had already warned her that if she put the hero in danger, she would kill her on the spot. The girl doesn't seem to understand what's happening. Only one night has passed, and the hero is already pointing a weapon at her. All this time, the crossbow was behind the hero's back. The girl put it there, thinking that it was uncomfortable for him to sleep. Charlie is the only chance to survive. She had no other choice, and now she regrets it. Pinky is not so easy to kill people, unlike the hero. This is how the team's first night passed, in an atmosphere of complete tension. The next morning, the hero realized that it was ineffective to search the entire island. Now every time he catches a Korean, he will have to ask if he has seen the Korean deputy. The hero found this amount of water and food after searching all the buildings. This should be enough for his team for several days. The team has arrived to the bridge they need to cross. While Charlie was on board the plane, he noticed that the island was divided into two parts, one larger and the other smaller. Having crossed the bridge, they will find themselves on a large part of the island. The hero is so sure of this because he has looked at all the routes taken by transport. Driving across the bridge, the hero discovered a corpse on his right side, which means there are other players somewhere nearby. The hero grabbed Pinky and jumped off the motorcycle with her because they started shooting at them from behind cover. The player shoots those who are trying to get to the other side. He has good cover, so it will be difficult for Charlie to detect his location, especially since he shoots very accurately. They won't be able to cross the bridge safely. They will have to either go back or swim along the river. But the problem is that Pinky can't swim. There is no other way out. The hero will go first and distract them and send the girl to leave here. Charlie cannot complete the mission without a means of transportation. If the girl leaves safely, he will be able to swim to the other shore. The hero felt that a current passed through his head. Pinky pointed to a very strange phenomenon in front of them. The man was running from this blue thing, but he couldn't make it. He was shot in the head from behind cover. The only way out for the team is to jump into the water, otherwise this phenomenon will reach them too. Charlie still doesn't understand what it is. It doesn't look like the action of the elements, and he's never heard of such a weapon in his life. This is a complete trap. There is an ambush of enemies in front and an electric field behind. At that second, an explosion occurred in the place where the ambush was located. There is no time to think about what kind of guy killed the shooter, because the field is already very close to their team. The boundaries of the field are moving faster than the hero thought. It is not clear how much more it will narrow. But they didn't think about one thing. The same guy is in front of them, and it is not known whether he will harm the team or not. The girl noticed that the guy was in a straitjacket. The hero thought that this would only benefit him. The guy doesn't think so. He calmly knocked the gun away from the hero as soon as he got close. This guy is quite strong, because before he only dealt with murder, he is the British assassin Jack. Charlie pushed the guy tens of meters away with a direct blow to the stomach. Pinky ran, covering her ears because she was afraid that someone would scream or something would explode. Jack told Pinky that there was no need to cover his ears because the field had stopped. The British assassin realized that their team still knew nothing about the game and began to attack them. The guy knocked out the weapon again, but while he was in an unstable position, the hero decided to use his frying pan. But the Briton turned out to be unpredictable. He released the knife blade from his mouth. The Briton turned out to be a real devil in the flesh. He is armed from top to bottom. Pinky sees that the fight has taken a different turn and Charlie is losing, but does not know how to help him. As a former doctor, Jack loved dissecting human bodies and in this he has no equal. When there were not enough other people's bodies, the criminal began to take care of his own body. After performing an autopsy, he placed the weapon in his stomach so that he could use it at any time and in any place. With a renewed body, he killed countless people. He is the same man who struck all of Europe with madness, which became known only after his capture. Charlie had seen records of his crimes, and he especially enjoyed killing women. Jack threw Charlie off the bridge straight into the water, followed by a hand fragmentation grenade. While swimming away, the guy said that the hero would not be able to even dive. At that distance, in any case, instant death awaited him. Pinky came to the rescue and knocked the grenade aside with a frying pan. Charlie is shocked that the girl can also drive a boat. She always liked driving, so she tried different vehicles. From the outside, Jack was delighted with Pinky. For him, she was just a killer girl. As soon as the guy was distracted by the girl, Charlie worked her face with a frying pan. At first, the hero wanted to kill him, 
But then he remembered his words. He knows the exact time the field stopped, which means he knows many of the features of this game. To begin with, the hero decided that he would take him with him because he had many questions. As soon as they return to the island, they will put him in an empty building and find something to tie him up with. The girl didn't understand why Charlie didn't kill this dangerous guy right away, and she realized that it was all because of her and began to feel embarrassed. While they were sailing, the hero said that knowing that the girl knew how to drive a boat, she chose a bridge and a motorcycle. It turns out they wasted their time. Pinky screamed at the hero as if his tongue would fall off from words of gratitude in her direction. The team sailed to the ferry pier and the weather suddenly changed and it began to rain heavily. When the hero woke up Jack, he was surprised that they didn't even kill him, but brought him somewhere, but he warned that the hero would regret it. Charlie asked him to tell him everything he knew about the battle royale. Her life would depend only on it. The killer laughed and said that he didn't want to, but the hero gave him a clear reason to change his mind. Time is short, so they need to figure it out faster. First, Charlie wants to know why the player was talking about the zone so suspiciously, as if he knew something about it. The Britons said that before the game, their bodies were changed, just as he changed his own organs. He explained that when everyone was asleep, the organization of the game sewed a chip into each player. For example, Charlie, he has a chip behind his left ear. When he feels the current, the chip lights up blue. Charlie suggested that the players would see the zone that the satellites emit. They would have chips implanted in them, and also that they would release poison when the players entered the blue zone. Jack also explained how he realized when the zone stopped, he saw strange changes in the sky, as if they were forming a circle where the zone would stop. The hero suggested moving on, as the girl said to be quieter, as she could hear people's steps. People began to appear one after another as expected. Many came here in groups. There was no point in the team facing him and wasting precious time, so they decided to leave. But Pinky couldn't just leave Jack, he could die here without even resisting and she immediately changed her mind because he's a serial killer. Charlie was lucky. He saw a jet ski at the pier, which means they were able to escape safely. Before they had time to come around the corner, they saw an enemy taking aim at an unarmed man. After the murder, the hero realized that it would be quite difficult for them to get to the water. There were a lot of enemies along the way. Charlie had an interesting idea, to return to the lighthouse because most likely there was no one there. In this case, they will have to swim. The girl doesn't know how, but if she swims slowly, everything will work out. The enemy noticed the team and ran towards them, but the hero was hit with an arrow right in the forehead. The heavens were on their side, the rain washes away their traces and muffles the sound, which means no one can notice them. But something terrible happened. The girl was hit in the shoulder from the back with a firearm. Fortunately, the bullet went out. After the shot, another group noticed their team. Now they need to act as quickly as possible. Charlie examined the girl. Her vital organs were not hit, but it was not clear where the shot came from. First, the hero decided to take care of the approaching opponents. The hero has run out of arrows. There are only a few cartridges left in the gun. Even if all the bullets run out, the hero will not be able to kill them all. It turned out that the shooter was on the ship and was aiming for the head, but hit the shoulder. And the most interesting thing is that the shooter turned out to be that same crazy player. He decided to start the second round of rabbit hunting. Although Pinky did not injure any vital organs, the wound is still severe. Such pain cannot be endured by an ordinary person. Their goal at the moment is to get to the jet ski and quickly get out of this location. As soon as Charlie ran, he noticed that the area suddenly became quiet and deserted. The hero didn't want to think about it. This was a chance for him, but he was shot in the back and hit in the vest. The shooter can't calm down and wants to finally deal with his original victim. Charlie left the girl still there due to circumstances. There are no other enemies nearby, so she will be fine. The envoy was able to avoid death due to his body armor, but he may be bleeding internally and needs painkillers. There is a bullet left, so he needs to thoroughly search his hiding place. Suddenly, the hero finds someone who has decided to simply hide. At first, Charlie thought that he had found a Korean deputy, but it was not him. They were only the same age and race. Since he is hiding in a warehouse without weapons, it means it is empty. Then before the murder, the hero decided to ask if the man had seen the Korean politician. To my surprise, the man even said his name. He most likely knows who politician Kim is. The man often saw him in real life, so he paid attention to him not yet on board the plane. He even saw him land and knows where he is. Charlie said that he would help him get out of here, and in return, the man would show him the deputy's hiding place. But this scum deceived the hero. He took out a pipe and was ready to kill him in order to take the weapon for himself. Charlie guessed, but he still didn't need him anymore, since he found out that Kim was somewhere close. The envoy remembered the words of the deputy, 
he said that people can make mistakes when they follow emotions, and these mistakes can later cause trouble, so you always need to stay on guard. At the moment of flashbacks, a fragmentation grenade flew into the hero's warehouse. After throwing the grenade, the shooter told his guys that they could figure it out themselves. If the hero died, they would take the girl for entertainment. One of them thought there was a shot before the explosion and the body lay alone. Charlie killed one and immediately ran to the exit. The second enemy did not have time to kill the hero. As the hero ran away, he met the crazy player again. At this time, the girl began to worry about Charlie and decided to do something. Here the hero thought that his enemy constantly uses a sniper rifle, even close up. It cannot be that he only has one weapon. In this case, Charlie began to act aggressively. He got so close that it was difficult for the enemy to turn with his long barrel. Unfortunately, Charlie was mistaken. The enemy with a gas mask turned out to have a revolver with him. The madman simply pretended that he had only one weapon and finally gave advice that you should always have an ace up your sleeve. As soon as he aimed at Charlie, an outside player laughed from the side and asked them if they would like to have fun. Jack magically came to the hero's aid. It's not even clear how he freed himself or how he found the hero's location. The gang asked him who he was, and Jack calmly replied that he was just a passing serial killer. One of the opponents felt funny. He thought that the guy really had something wrong with his head. Jack acted as if no one was watching, and the gang began to argue among themselves. The enemy is tired of the hero in a gas mask, constantly commanding him. He constantly held back when the pseudo-leader treated him like a subordinate, all because of the promised Asian girl. The hero was lucky. They decided to find Pinky first, and then deal with the two bastards, Charlie Jack. The gas mask player was infuriated by this useless conflict and decided to eliminate this garbage. After which he asked Charlie not to worry about the girl because she would soon follow him, but he still did not notice Jack. As soon as he pointed the gun at his head, Jack released his blade at his wrist. After the throw, the British assassin launched himself towards the crazy player. The enemy doesn't like this at all. He doesn't understand the guy because he said that he was just passing by and now he's helping Charlie. Jack simply ignored him and began to hold the advantage in the battle. The player still managed to escape because Charlie would die anyway. He began to lose consciousness, and then he saw Pinky running towards him. While passed out, the hero remembered his past. He once asked the same question, what was he doing here? He was almost killed in a terrorist attack. The hero does not remember all the details, but only the severed left hand of his partner. It was not possible to return due to a serious injury, the body and mind were dying due to complications. At that moment, he believed that he would spend his last days in a hospital bed. It was then that the hero first met with Deputy Kim. Kim didn't know how to properly visit the sick, so he brought strawberries, because that's the custom when visiting. The MP was always annoying and ignorant. Kim joked that strawberries help against cancer, but the hero doesn't have it. That's what he thinks himself. He injured his leg, but it also hurt his heart. Charlie could have worked elsewhere, but he came here, which means he became a soldier not only because of his dream. The hero said that the one who dreamed of becoming him died that day in his arms. The honorable soldier died, but the guy without ambition survived. The politician replied that there is no such thing as a senseless death. He probably wanted to save the hero and the will of the dead must be fulfilled by someone. Kim was very dear to the hero because he set his brain straight, just like his daughter who saved Charlie's life. Having completed his rehabilitation, the hero graduated from the army and headed to the Korean politician, Kim. He went to the only person who knew about his torment because of his partner, who saved his life, whom he considers his father. That day, Charlie made a promise to himself to live a new life for the sake of the deputy. The hero woke up and saw the girl confronting the British man who wanted to kill him. Charlie doesn't understand Jack's intentions. First he saves them, and now he's trying to kill them. Jack saved the hero for only one purpose, to find and take Pinky. After his promise, the hero will survive in any case, even if he has to go through hell. The hero has no choice but to invite Jack to join their team. Jack had never felt strange in his life, as if the hero had suffered a concussion and was now delirious. Charlie is not joking. He explained to the Briton that everyone had long been divided into teams, and it would be easier for him to survive in their team than on his own. Pinky asked the hero if they would really take a serial killer onto their team and go with him. The hero said that first of all, only repulsed thugs got here, and demons must fight with their own kind. Jack liked the hero's speech and decided to join the team, but on one condition. If the hero can survive, then Jack will step in without question. The Briton explained that the hero must play Russian roulette, put a revolver to his head and pull the trigger. If he survives, he will win and Jack will join the team. You will have to shoot three times, which corresponds to the level of courage to become a leader. 
Charlie doesn't understand what to do because there are only seven rounds in the ram and he needs to shoot three times, especially in a row. Pinky asked Charlie if he would really shoot himself because it is easier to kill a Briton, but if the shot is blank, he will kill the whole team. If the hero dies not from bullets, then from wounds there is no other way out. Charlie promised to devote his life to the deputy. If he fails, then his life will cost less than a bullet. The girl and Jack did not expect such actions from the hero. He shot six times, leaving a bullet for the last shot. The British killer is only pleased with this hero's prank. He turned out to be crazier than he expected. Charlie remembered how many bullets were left in the revolver after the fight with the gas mask. The last one was a 7.62 caliber bullet, weighing 10 grams. When the hero pulled the trigger, he felt the cartridge move. From his extensive experience, he was able to roughly understand the location of the bullet using the center of gravity. But if the hero had miscalculated in his calculations, he would have died right in this warehouse. The hero was lucky with a new team member, he bandaged them. Charlie was lucky that all his organs were intact, and Pinky could not even realize that she was bandaged by a serial killer. Jack is incredibly charged. He was about to go deal with that bulletproof gas mask, but the hero said that they were avoiding fights. Moreover, they do not have any weapons and do not know when the field will begin to narrow. The only thing they need is transport. While Pinky was wondering who could have taken the jet ski, the hero began to search the corpses in search of the necessary supplies. The Briton was eager to help the hero because it was like a treasure hunt. When the hero was searching the corpses, he found a GPS radio in one of them. Their team will need it. There is a detailed map of this island on the radio. With it, the hero will quickly find where Deputy Kim is hiding. An airplane flew in the sky. It was definitely not civil aviation. It definitely wouldn't have flown here. Jack found a pistol with a signal near one of the corpses and decided to find out what would happen. Other players clearly saw where the shot came from and called their team sick idiots. Charlie is furious. What did the Briton even think? Revealing their location, they don't even have normal weapons. To which he replied that let the enemies come, the more complex the game, the more interesting it is. Pinky called out to the hero as expected. This is not an ordinary plane, he landed some strange cargo. It turned out to be a combat cargo with supplies, which will make the future game much easier for the team. The players noticed red smoke and did not understand what it was but their leader said that it was combat cargo, which means they would head straight for the hero. The head said that the cargo could be full of food, weapons, medicine and the like. The team does not have time to deal with the cargo for a long time because many players noticed the shot and will soon arrive here. Having opened the cargo, they saw there a bunch of food, water, body armor, and most importantly, weapons. Charlie gave Pinky a gun again. She also needs at least something to stand up for herself. But the hero said that it is not necessary to kill with it, it will be useful for a Briton who likes to kill girls. Even though they accepted Jack into their team, they must always remain on the alert. He has an excellent track record of kidnappings, murders, mutilations. The hero also added that there were rumors of sexual violence from which Pinky almost lost consciousness. They won't be able to guess what will come to the madman's mind. He understands perfectly well that the girl is not used to using weapons, but at least it will be like this just in case. The team heard shots across the street from them, other players on the team killed another player. They are looking for water because it ran out during the escape. Jack asked the team to prepare for battle because the opponents would come soon. Charlie heard a strange sound. He stuck his head out and a flashbang grenade was immediately thrown at him from the car. Now he doesn't see or hear anything. He can't understand anything and doesn't know how many people were in the car. The hero is completely defenseless. The hero briefly noticed that Pinky had dropped the gun but could not find her anywhere. It turned out that while the team was stunned, the opponents took the girl with them and threw her into the trunk of their car. The driver apologized to the girl for passing out because of him. They had little time left until the end of the effect. They just wanted to steal the ammunition, so she should be grateful that they did not kill her team. The girl remembered how five years ago she met Hannah, her cellmate, in a women's prison. After that incident, the girl lost the slightest desire to live. And meanwhile, Hannah met her without a drop of uncertainty she crept into her life and returned the desire to live. When Pinky walked along the corridor, she heard a conversation between two jailers. It turns out that Hannah's ex-boyfriend was a rapist. She was threatened and eventually caught for complicity. The guy also went to prison, but he has the opportunity to be released. The girl cannot believe that such scum will be released. And Hannah, who did nothing wrong, the only thing the girl could do was execute that guy, a serial rapist. And Pinky realized that the guy was right in front of her. 
but she didn't understand what he forgot in the royal game. The guy decided to warn that if the girl tried to run away, he would kill her, but this was not necessary for Pinky, because she had a chance to kill this scum. First, the girl needs to get out by any chance. She realized that the enemies have everything they need in a stolen backpack with supplies. While Charlie did not understand where the girl had gone, including with supplies, Jack told him that she had been kidnapped. They heard sounds nearby, but now they have no medicine and are better off avoiding battle. They need to get out of here as quickly as possible because the blue field is starting to get closer. The main priority for the hero is to find Pinky, because he will never forgive himself in his life if something happens to her. And besides, she has all the supplies. Jack laughed and said that the hero just fell in love with her, but the hero asked him to stop talking nonsense. Charlie offered to follow in their footsteps, but Jack was somehow able to steal the hero's GPS radio and suggested another option. Using the radio, they were able to see Pinky's location. She was lucky that she managed to connect to the second radio. To divert attention, she began asking the rapist various questions about why she was not killed and where they were taking her. He did not have time to answer because they had already arrived at the marked point. The guy asked the girl to follow him because similar mini traps were made throughout the territory that could not be noticed. The girl realized that it would be difficult to notice them without looking closely. All that remained was to somehow report this to her team. The rapist does not understand why the girl does not scream, but pretends to be obedient. For this he hit her, and at the moment of her fall, the walkie-talkie fell out. He sees through girls like these, it was because of one that he ended up in prison. Now he has already forgiven Hannah, because thanks to her he ended up in such an amazing game. He likes it here, free killing, stealing, you can do whatever you want. The rapist is agitated because he has been starving since he went to prison. Pinky began to buy time, she plays with his nerves, saying that he kidnapped the girl only because he could not cope with her friends. The guy went wild, at the moment the girl's life depends only on his mood. When the guy grabbed the girl by the face and began to lecture him, she bit him on the hand. Pinky said that she herself killed Seven and ended up on death row, so she's not afraid of anything, especially trash like him. The rapist decided to teach her a lesson, promising that he would try to leave the body intact. First he was going to remove the limbs. He attacked the girl. She had backup in the form of a knife that Jack gave her, and she pierced the guy's eye. Pinky hid while he writhed in pain. Now he intends to find her and burn her to hell. The girl promised herself that in any case she would take revenge for Hannah, whom he had framed. The girl's team has found her location and will soon come to her aid. While the guy was looking for a girl to deal with her, she listened to where he was walking and unexpectedly threw a stone at his head. Because of this stone, she gave away her place and the rapist now knows where she is hiding. This is what the girl was counting on. As soon as he got closer, she would hit him with the blade again. The guy turned out to be smart and first threw a Molotov cocktail, as a result of which the girl's clothes caught fire. The girl thought that her heart would burst from fear. If she slowed down, she would burn alive. A blade is not enough for her, so she decided to look for a weapon, especially since this warehouse is similar to the one at her home. She had a bunch of tools there. Maybe they are in this warehouse too. He burst in and promised to kill her, but paths flew in his direction. He was angry that he could not find a weapon here himself. But what she found was not a pistol, but a pneumatic nail gun. The rapist ran out into the street and from there decided to throw an incendiary cocktail at her. The girl has a hard time aiming at moving objects, so she doesn't understand what to do now. She hit him, but he is still able to move. The team found a tripwire. Someone is trying well to defend themselves from the attackers. If this is the case, then the girl is hiding somewhere not far from them. The girl shot the rapist several times and now he has run out of strength. And now he thinks about an apology and asks Pinky not to kill him. The guy is lying, of course. He will kill the girl as soon as she loses her vigilance. Pinky knew a good man who died because of him, so she won't leave him the slightest chance. An innocent person drawn into crimes because of threats, Hannah couldn't bear the guilt of facing her victims. If the rapist doesn't end up the same way, it won't be fair. Charlie found Pinky, but Jack stopped him, because now something very interesting is planned. After Hannah's death, the girl vowed that she would avenge her if she ever got out. When the girl was transferred to another prison, she read Hannah's letter dedicated to her. She wrote in it that this was her only way to atone for the victims. She also wrote that she regretted leaving the girl alone, and most of all she hated that the rapist ruined her life. But she did not know that she was not being taken to another prison, but to choose the path of her future life. Pinky won't let such trash go free, it's all just for Hannah. Hannah wrote so that the girl would not waste her life on revenge, she asked Pinky to focus on starting over and changing her life for the better. The girl is just glad that she was able to make such scum feel a little pain. 
Pinky will no longer allow such guys to ruin her life. She warned him that if she ever meets him again, he will have to understand what the girl will do to him. She spoke out and left, but the rapist decided to kill her by running behind her. But when he ran, he forgot about his own trap. He tore off the pin and was torn into many pieces. Charlie covered the girl with his body in time. If she had continued to stand, the fragments would have killed her. The hero was worried about the girl's safety. She was already fine. Pinky was embarrassed because Charlie had never been so worried about her. Jack turned out to be not their team member, but an enemy. He was convinced that the girl was significantly different from the rest and could not wait for the right moment. The team cannot stay here for so long because it is unlikely that the deputy is definitely not here. Charlie decided to move on when a shooter from the bushes once again hit the hero in the back. The hero was lucky that he was wearing a new bulletproof vest from the load and the bullet did not penetrate it. This is the same gang that rubbed around near the combat cargo. The hero could not even think that they would be followed. The hero doesn't know how to leave here. He can't see anything because of the dense fire. But the girl found the right solution. The enemy leader did not like the fact that they were leaving and was ready to do anything to kill them and take the equipment for himself. While the girl is frantically driving the car and the hero is nervous that opponents will run after them, Jack feels great. They're far enough away that they should be out of reach. The problem at the moment is one thing. The team is too far from the pier. Now the hero began to speculate where Deputy Kim could hide among such scum. Charlie saw the town of Pachinki. It's quite a big town. There are probably a lot of places where you can hide. Their next destination is a shelter, but suddenly something goes wrong. One of the players disappeared into the trunk of their car and pointed a gun at them. The player turned out to be a girl who said to go where she said, otherwise she would blow the hero's head off. Jack knows this girl. In the criminal world, she is called the Queen of Drugs. The name already speaks for itself. The guys ran after the Queen, then she met Pinky and realized that sooner or later she would leave in a jeep, so she disappeared into the trunk. She asked to be taken to the bunker and showed the place on the radio. If the team disobeyed her, she would kill everyone. If she can threaten Charlie like that, then unfortunately she picked the wrong team. At that second, the Briton took out a blade and jumped on the girl. The girl dodged the Briton's attack and he almost pierced the hero's neck. During an already tense situation, they only missed the ambush that Pinky discovered along the way. The car hit a bump and the girl's weapon fell out. The hero decided not to hesitate and take the chance. But when they hit the second bump, the hero flew out of the car along with the drug addict. Pinky wanted to turn around and pick up Charlie, but the Briton had other plans and grabbed the steering wheel, directing the car forward. Jack explained that the ambush guys were wasting their ammunition, and now they wouldn't be able to get back. Pinky is driving. It's up to her to decide. But if they turn around, they'll both get a bullet in the forehead. The opponents were upset that they lost the team because it is difficult to hit a moving car. Of the opponents, I saw two bodies on the ground that fell out while driving dangerously over bumps. The smart guy began to guess that the hero was still alive and offered to fire a control shot for their safety. Before he could even finish speaking, a huge group of players in cars and motorcycles headed towards them. The hero recognized the leader, not so long ago they left them, and now he is here again. The opponents began to shoot at the gang, but the car turned out to be armor-proof. At speed, the leader got out of the car and shot all the players. These guys were chasing that girl, but they were also following the hero, it's not clear why. At the most inopportune moment, the radio started playing and he was found alive. Kim's voice sounded over the radio. He began broadcasting on all radio channels, in the hope that the hero would hear him. The deputy saw him on the airliner. He just wanted to say his location when the leader turned off the radio. The enemy remembered the hero that not so long ago he saw him taking supplies from a combat cargo. The actress suddenly woke up in the girl and started talking complete nonsense. She told the enemies that she was on the same team with this guy, and the one who spoke on the walkie-talkie would soon move with his friends to their location. She also added that their team was armed with the best weapons and offered a deal. They would let the hero and the girl go, and she would not kill them. The leader got tired of listening to nonsense and hit the girl with the butt of a firearm. Charlie understood her plan. She was making one last attempt to escape. They were really in big trouble. The hero realized that he dropped the gun when he flew out of the car, so now he has no weapon. To begin with, the leader decided to talk to the girl for a couple of minutes while his two subordinates dealt with the hero. Charlie cannot die so senselessly. Deputy Kim just got in touch and he was about to die. When the head of their gang dragged the girl by the hair to a secluded place, she managed to show the hero that she had two smoke grenades, which she was now using. While the drug queen was talking complete nonsense, she quietly stole these grenades from one player. 
The girl threw grenades and the opponents did not have time to understand where they came from. At that moment, he crept up behind the enemy and attacked him. While one opponent slammed his face into the ground, another had his arm torn off by a bullet. The leader saw through the girl's thoughts that she was trying to gain time with the help of these smoke grenades. He threw the girl with all his strength into the car in which he arrived. The hero again has a new concern. The leader took the radio from him, and without it he will not find the deputy. He will have to find this couple. The smoke cleared and the hero saw the girl. The leader still put a bullet in the girl's stomach, which she guessed. She knows where the idiot with the walkie-talkie went, so she offered to team up for a while. The Briton asked Pinky what she was going to do next, but he was sure that the hero had long since died because the walkie-talkie suddenly went silent and the gun was in the car. However, Jack did not expect such an answer that the girl would go to look for Charlie. Pinky has a good feeling that the hero will survive no matter what. The Briton suggested that the girl was with the hero in the bunker because she was going there. The team had not yet decided where to go, so they decided that they would go to the bunker. For Jack, this is just excitement. If the hero survives, it will be very interesting. The Briton turned out to be right. Charlie and the girl arrived at the bunker, where the former leader would soon come. The girl said that there were all the necessary medications inside, so they would have time before he arrived. Charlie is confused. He came here just for her. Why would she trust him? The only thing that motivates the hero is the incentive to find a walkie-talkie to contact Deputy Kim. But the hero cannot live in peace without adventure. A strange player is on their tail and will follow them. The bullet went right through but did not cause serious internal damage. The hero just needs to stop the bleeding. While he was helping the girl, he sharply noted that this was a pretty good place to hide from all the players. Then he began to think that if he were alone, he would simply barricade himself here, which means Kim could be in this bunker. But these are just stupid thoughts. If Charlie didn't know the hero, he wouldn't be in this game. Suddenly, the hero smelled a pleasant smell coming from the next room. The smell turned out to be far from unpleasant. There were several dozen corpses in that room. The hero does not understand why there are so many corpses here and all of them without equipment, as if someone had specially piled them up. But he began to guess who could have done this. There is no blood on the floor or on the walls, which means they were killed somewhere else and brought here. The girl thanked her for the first aid. The trap was hers. Thanks to the hero, she will be able to fight again. The girl shouted to Charlie. She did not mean that she was ready to fight him. She said that the bunker of that Yakuza, he killed all these players. But the hero cannot trust her because she snuck up on him from behind. The girl threw the weapon on the floor, proving that she was completely honest with Charlie. She just wants to build trust between the hero before they team up. The Yakuza's name is Cedric. He assembled a team of eight people in this bunker. The girl was also on his team. It seemed that everyone else had united. And he invited her, to which she of course agreed. The only thing she is sure of is that he is a good shot, and he is extremely strong, which can be seen by looking at his physique. The Yakuza is cold-blooded and has been in his fair share of battles. The girl stole the leader's phone, which is why he is looking for her. She explained her behavior by saying that the girl was a bit of a kleptomaniac. She had to steal food since childhood in order to survive, so it turned into a kind of habit. Moreover, the girl felt threatened. He allows people from his team to live only if they are weaker than himself and kills everyone else. The hero realized why there are so many bodies of corpses here. The Yakuza is afraid that anyone stronger than him will later turn against him. The leader will not kill the girl until he finds his phone. She lied to him that she buried him near the bunker, which is why they came here to catch him by surprise. The girl said that they would wait and kill him. The hero would remain with the walkie-talkie, and she would be free from this bastard. Charlie doesn't fully understand how to act. The girl is also a criminal and put a gun to his head. At the same time, he doesn't know where he can get another walkie-talkie. It would be easier to take it from the Yakuza. From that moment on, they united into one team, but the hero warned that he would kill her if he felt something was wrong. Along the way, Jack noticed a signal from the radio. The point was located close to the bunker, which means they were heading in the right direction. The team has arrived at the right point, but cannot find the bunker. The Briton doesn't understand why the hero constantly turns the walkie-talkie off and on, but he understood one thing. The hero was using the walkie-talkie and they were about to be killed. So he grabbed Pinky and jumped out of the car with her. The hero and the girl heard the sounds of gunfire and became wary that someone outside might come to their bunker. Charlie's relief is that he hid the car away from the bunker, which means no one knows about them. The hero is ready to kill opponents when they enter their bunker. The guy who saw Charlie and the girl entering the hiding place ended up on the same team with the Yakuza and reported everything to him. According to the speaker, 
Cedric said that if the hero does not come out, he will kill Kim. But in fact, they are holding hostage not a deputy, but a Briton, which the leader and Charlie himself do not realize. Cedric was once a top manager in the Yakuza organization that controls southern Japan. Many people wanted to know how the man got into such a position. The answer is simple. He used everything he had, even if it meant doing something inhumane. The times when the Yakuza valued honor and sanctity are gone. Now the status of the Yakuza in society is no longer what it used to be. Survival of the fittest. All that matters is staying alive. That's the only thing Cedric has learned during his time on the job. The man came prepared for battle. He made sure that there were several suicide bombers in the game who would do what he ordered them to do. Over time, Cedric weeded out everyone who could pose even the slightest threat to him. For the sake of insurance, he took his phone with him. But because of the girl, everything went awry. It turns out that Cedric still has some tricks up his sleeve, which means he really did kidnap Deputy Kim and is holding him hostage. No matter what, the hero dared to go to meet him. He must deal with this Yakuza once and for all. Charlie's location was revealed only by a radio message, so he would not have known where the hero was. The Yakuza turned out to be quite cunning. He noticed that the hero actively responded to the message from Kim and decided to take him on as a show-off. The man had no idea that the hero would dare to steal his buggy and save the girl, but now all they had to do was lure the hero out. The girl still doesn't understand why Charlie doesn't just run away because the whole thing with the deputy could be a trap. There is no way for the hero to know this until he knows it himself. And even more so, if he tries to run away, they will run after him. The girl has met many criminals in her life, but all they ever wanted was her money, drugs and the like. She could never trust anyone, but not the hero. She could even say that he had changed in the short time during which she had known him. Charlie could have used her while she was unconscious, but instead he treated her wound and saved her life. The hero finally trusted the girl and said that he would never have ended up in this game if he had not known Deputy Kim. The girl decided for herself that she would go with the hero. She would not feel good if she allowed a teammate, even a temporary one, to die. The enemy with the rifle thought that he would go to the building, but lost sight of the hero, after which he heard the approaching sound of a motor. Jumping off a cliff, the hero decided that this was the best way to penetrate their hideout. The girl is amazed. She could not even think that Charlie would be able to park the buggy on the roof of the building. Charlie was sure that the opponents blocked the first and second floors, but they did not take care of the roof. When he opened the door, he found his friends tied up. At first he asked Pinky how they ended up here, but then he noticed that she had C4 explosive devices placed on her belt. The first explosion occurred and Cedric warned that this was a warning. If the hero makes any sudden movement or tries to escape, then Deputy Kim and his friends will be blown up next. It suddenly dawned on the hero that the fact that he had killed no one yet meant that the Yakuza wanted to talk to him. Cedric started with the hero leaving the drug addict and joining his team. If the hero joins, he will free Deputy Kim and his friends. The Yakuza showed his cards. He said that he needed the phone in order to negotiate with the organizers of the game. The phone has a lot of information about the battlefields, things that they don't want the outside world to see. For example, a video of a plane flight, information about the chips that are embedded in everyone, as well as information about the map of the island and its reliefs. Charlie realized that Cedric intended to blackmail the organizers of the game. The battlefield is the greatest business opportunity in history. Any criminal syndicate would be out of their minds if they didn't take advantage of it. If Cedric manages to escape from the island with the phone, he will earn a fortune. But the hero does not need to know all the intricacies. He only needs to worry about the life of Deputy Kim. Now, if the hero refuses the offer, then everyone will die through his fault. The hero came to them with a box that supposedly contained a phone, but the meeting was scheduled near a magnetic field so that he could not escape anywhere. Before the hero gives up the phone, the Yakuza will have to release one of the hostages. Charlie doesn't care about death. If Cedric opens the box incorrectly, the pin will come off and the grenade will explode. The hero has a brilliant plan. When he shows the phone, he will take another hostage and Kim will take it when he gives the phone back. He thought through this plan together with the girl most likely the Yakuza will be the last to release the deputy. But if it's Jack, then he and this psycho will destroy their entire gang. In any case, their team will remain in the black. Charlie sticks to his plan. He will show the phone after the Yakuza releases another hostage. The hero was glad that the whole plan was going like clockwork. But when he opened the drawer, he did not find the phone. And when I shouted to the girl, I already realized that she had simply run away with the phone. Cedric said that if there is no phone, then there will be no deal after which he shot Jack in the chest. The girl left the hero and drove off in a buggy, happy and with the phone, 
she still doesn't understand how the hero didn't notice that she stole the phone. It turned out that the girl knew what the phone was for. An SD card was inserted into it, on which there were a bunch of videos and photos, everything that had happened since the plane flight. The drug addict could not give away such an important thing. For her, it would have been a waste of money. She also added that if someone wants to survive in this game, they will have to play dirty. The hero is currently in big trouble. He is hiding behind a tree with one machine gun and there is no cover nearby. Besides, Kim is still a hostage. Charlie must get out at any cost. He dared and went out to the Yakuza without a weapon. He said that they were both deceived and he had no intentions of fighting. Cedric believed the hero and went to him. He guessed that the girl would understand what the phone was for. The Yakuza asked Charlie why he would spare the hero if he was useless without a phone. Charlie decided to make a bet. He is ready to track down the girl and kill her and deliver the phone to him. But in return, he asked for a promise that he would not do anything with Kim. The hero did not care who he killed, as long as he completed the mission and took the deputy. The Yakuza gave credit to the hero for having the courage to negotiate in such a situation. Cedric said that if any of the Yakuza break their promise, they kill them as brutally as possible. He threw poor Jack right behind the magnetic field. Everyone who ends up behind him will die, coughing up blood. Cedric gave the hero a day to bring the phone, otherwise he would end up next to Jack. Pinky woke up and didn't understand why she was still tied up, but she remembered. The gang demanded to leave the girl because in their opinion it was fair, since he did not give them the phone as expected. But the hero promised that he would soon save her. On the one hand, the girl understands that Charlie is trying to save them. But on the other hand, she did not expect that the Briton would die so easily. Everything happened very quickly. They weren't real friends. This killer deserved to die anyway, but seeing Jack die made me feel something like... Suddenly, the spirit of Jack appeared in front of her and said for her that she felt sad. But when the girl came to her senses, she realized that it was not a spirit, but a real living Jack. The Briton said that being a serial killer is dangerous. You can never have too many lives, which is why he built some kind of insurance into his body. When the Yakuza shot the British man, the bullet barely missed his heart. It simply stopped because his body went into shock. That's when his kind of insurance kicked in. He installed a pacemaker for himself, which turns on automatically when the bullet reaches zero. Pinky still can't believe what's happening. It turns out this thing saved Jack's life. Another thing the girl doesn't understand is how Jack's body didn't burst into pieces in the field. She thought that it was bursting the poisonous capsules in the body. Regarding this, the Briton said that the chip ceases to be active when the person is already dying. His heart stops and the chip stops working. He doesn't fully understand how it works but you can spend as much time there as you want and come out completely healthy. Only one of the opponents wanted to go watch at the entrance when he noticed an unexpected guest. Jack killed him and told Pinky to get out of here quickly, but the girl said that first they need to find that man Kim. She considers him a good person who is looking for a hero. I also decided to leave a letter in case Charlie came and didn't find anyone. A few hours earlier, when the hero was about to go on a search, the Yakuza stopped him and asked if he could really find her because she had left not long ago, but the island was huge. The hero has only one clue. This is a buggy, but the hero also needs transport, so the Yakuza sent his subordinate with him. The chances of finding a girl on such a huge island are almost negligible, but the hero was lucky that there was little gas left in the buggy. Charlie doesn't need to search the entire island. He just needs to look around and figure out where the buggy is parked. The hero turned out to be right. She couldn't get far, and she hid in a small town called a prison. She may be hiding somewhere in the prison, but she could also leave the buggy and run into the forest. But the option with the forest disappears, because it is unlikely that she would refuse such a shelter. Since prisons are designed to overwhelm inmates, there are countless weapons that rival those on a military base. Many people died here trying to hold this place at the beginning of the game. This is a bold adventure in the opinion of the hero. The corpse's equipment remained untouched here, which means no one else came here. It remains to understand where the drug addict is hiding because the prison is clean. The enemy was tired and said that he would wait for the hero in the car while he looked for the girl. If the girl really passed by this location, then the hero has real problems because he does not know where to look for her. To begin with, Charlie decided to talk to the girl as soon as he found her and only then begin violence if necessary. So Charlie spoke as expected. The girl was hiding in prison and attacked from behind for the umpteenth time. The hero is like a magnet for bullets in the back. They shoot him in the back over and over again and cannot penetrate him. A real struggle ensued between them. The hero tore off the pin and threw a fragmentation grenade in its direction. 
The enemy did not even have time to get into the car when the hero had already found adventure for his ass. The drug addict passed Charlie and missed again. This is definitely not her day. The problem for the hero is that although she cannot shoot, she has two shotguns in her hands. The girl told the hero that she gave him the phone as bait, that Cedric killed him instead of the girl, but she was very disappointed that she saw the hero alive. With two shotguns alternating, the hero has no time to escape. Charlie must urgently take another approach because the girl was able to injure her hand. He was lucky that his bodyguard came to the sound of gunfire and told him to move or he would be killed. This is his chance and he shoots the Yakuza subordinate. From this outcome of the action, the girl fell into shock because she was more than sure that the hero was at the same time with Cedric. The girl does not understand what the hero is doing because he just killed him but should have killed her. Charlie asked her why she betrayed him because they would have been fine if she had just stuck to the plan. The drug addict ordered him to stop making her laugh. She was surprised by the hero's faith that she could trust the first person she met. From the very beginning, she used Charlie as bait. If she had not done this, then the hero could have easily set her up. The girl believed that she escaped thanks to the hero. But then from the hiding place, she saw how he came with a Yakuza man. Now Charlie killed him and the drug addict asks what he is counting on. In fact, she may kill him because she understands that he saved her life. She just wants to know his ultimate goal. Charlie knew her even before the game. One day he was assigned to investigate a case of notorious people sentenced to death. She was one of them, the head of a notorious drug cartel. From what the hero heard, someone the girl trusted betrayed her and turned her over to the police, which is how she ended up on death row. The hero understands perfectly well that she has had a rather difficult life since she first got involved with crime. Charlie is sure that all the girl wanted was to stay alive and nothing more. The girl wants to know what the hero wants to convey with this story. Without hesitation, the hero replied that he would help her survive, despite the fact that she had betrayed him. If the girl really trusts the hero, then they will be able to work together again, as if nothing had happened. Charlie promised that when they return, they will definitely kill Cedric and save all his friends. She had already extended her hand, but remembered the words of the organization that only one would survive, and at that moment took out a pistol. The hero really wanted her to extend her hand, but there was no other way out but to stun her. Although this was a risky decision, there was no other way she would not be able to hit it blindly. He took advantage of the moment and laid her down on the concrete floor of the building. She wishes the hero had done this from the beginning instead of pretending to be nice with his bullshit lies. At first, the hero did not understand what kind of lie we were talking about. The girl asked how he was going to get out of this island with Kim if only one wins. The blue color hit Charlie's eyes. He completely forgot about the zone that can narrow, but it's too late because it's in front of his face. The girl was made laugh by this news that she would not die alone, but together with the hero. She knew that the hero needed the phone, not her. He would have to look hard because she hid it well. When she said that she would be very sorry that the field would kill the hero first, he grabbed her in his arms and carried her away. Even through all the pain and humiliation, he remains kind to her. She doesn't understand anything at all, but for Charlie, there are people he needs to save. The hero doubts that Cedric will give up the hostages so easily after receiving the phone. Most likely, he will treat them the same way as he did with the people from the bunker. Since the hero is going to save Kim and his comrades, he will need the help of a girl. Charlie is no longer bothered by the phone. He simply asks for human help. And so she takes the weapon again and aims at the hero, in her opinion. The hero is simply begging to use it. There was no more talk. The field reached them and the hero began to cough up blood. Charlie asks the girl to leave, but she sent it all to hell. What difference does it make where to die, in the zone, or because of someone else? She just lost consciousness. The guy takes her in his arms for the millionth time and saves her. But if the hero doesn't get out of the zone soon, he won't last long. But if he runs alone, he will have time to survive. Whether he should just leave her in the zone and save himself, he doesn't know. I didn't have to think long. The zone stopped and the hero was able to save his life and the girls. It turned out that this was all due to the fact that this time they were closer to the center, where the field becomes smaller. The chip in the neck also stopped working. The hero realized that the field would not kill the player if he left it in time. On the other hand, this girl will not die so easily. She has gone through too many difficulties to die. The Yakuza does not understand why his subordinate does not get in touch, because before leaving he gave him a walkie-talkie in order to be constantly in touch. To be on the safe side, he asked his next subordinate to bring him Kim and Pinky. When the enemy arrived at the bunker, he did not see the guards. Instead, he asked Kim to stand up, but at that moment Jack was behind him, 
who was too eagerly waiting for the next trophy for his collection of murdered scum. The Briton really liked the machete because it even cuts bones. Pinky asked Kim to talk to her. Their team is not going to hurt him because a Korean from their team is looking for him. The deputy actively reacted to this information, raising his head. The girl wanted to take off the deputy's mask, but they were prevented by the Yakuza, who does not understand how Jack could survive. The Briton asked the girl to run away with Kim, and he would deal with this bastard himself. The Yakuza complimented Jack that he was a pretty tough nut to crack that even he couldn't handle. When he asked how he managed to survive, the Briton replied that he used a restoration spell. Pinky and Kim are almost free. Thanks to Jack, they managed to hit the girl, but the wound is not too serious. She asked Kim to keep up with her. They need to get out and find her friend, perhaps an acquaintance of the deputy. A terrible thing happened again. Somehow Kim was hit with a weapon. The girl asks him to get up. He cannot give up so easily. Players on the street heard gunshots and thought their boss had killed one of the hostages. But one of them swore he heard gunfire and not just a single shot. The next bastards began to approach the girl, but fortunately for her, Charlie appeared at that opportune moment. With a direct blow to his knee, the hero knocks out one of the opponents, also knocking out the weapon. His partner did not have time to react and received a burst of bullets directly into his forehead. But the first player is still alive and began to take out a pistol. Charlie finally met up with Pinky as promised. He returned unharmed but almost unharmed. The hero asked to explain how it happened that Kim received a bullet, but the girl decided to tell him later, because this is a rather long story. The deputy's wound is not critical, but it needs to be treated as soon as possible. When Charlie took off his mask, he realized that it was not Deputy Kim at all, but a completely unknown man. While the hero was wondering where Kim could be, a real battle to the death began between the Briton and the Yakuza. Jack thought that the enemy was hiding only behind weapons and his henchmen, but he never expected that he could still fight like a man. No matter how much the Briton would like to continue fighting him, he is worried about the girl, so he decided to give the victory to the enemy. The Yakuza grinned that he couldn't go anywhere, because there was a magnetic field behind him. He still believes that Jack will not be able to go into the field, and his guys are on the other side, so in his opinion, the killer lost. Cedric, unfortunately, doesn't know much. A person who has already died cannot be killed a second time. The chip was indeed deactivated. In the field, Jack laughed and asked if he was really the Yakuza, but decided to clarify where exactly, in games or anime, they are quite cool and tough. In reality, Cedric is just a coward. He has no place in the game. He just wants to order his minions around and hide in his little bunker. Cedric was angered by the Brit's words and had to abandon the Yakuza to survive when he was caught by the police. But his plan was to take over the battlefields and restore the organization to its former glory. At the moment of their pleasant dialogue, a girl came who woke up in Charlie's car. She said that he is a coward. This is too rude. He just does what he needs to win, but he lost his hostages and his henchmen. The girl decided to make a bet with him. She was tempted to keep the phone, but she would return it because she wanted to get out of here alive. Charlie has saved the girl so many times, and she offers Cedric to kill everyone remaining, but in return he must promise that he will no longer try to kill her. The hero asked the man why he pretended to be Kim, but he was asked to say so by the Yakuza, otherwise he would have killed him. They were found at the wrong time by players in the power of the Yakuza. Most likely they will go inside, so it is better to fight from cover. The hero does not intend to save this man. He is not indifferent only to Deputy Kim. The girl asked to at least spare the man from suffering. The hero killed him, and the girl became sad. But if this man was not a deputy, then whose voice the hero heard on the radio could not seem to him. Charlie came to the Yakuza and asked what was wrong with the deal, but he cancelled it because the girl brought the phone, not him. Moreover, he did not kill her, so the hero did not fulfill any part of the contract. The hero asked where he was keeping the real Kim, but he replied that he didn't know who he was, asked the unknown man to pretend to be him, and that's all. The guy he disguised as Kim was just some random guy he found by chance, and the voice that the hero constantly heard was a recording from a walkie-talkie. When Cedric took the radio from the hero, the same message had been coming from it for some time, so he thought of recording Kim's real voice in advance. The Yakuza slaves came running to them, and he himself was about to leave the bunker because it was no longer safe in it, especially since the magnetic field was approaching. When the girl and the hero targeted each other, she told him to lie down when she gave the sign. He didn't understand anything at all. But as soon as she gave the sign, he did not resist and lay down. At that moment, she shot the Yakuza subordinates. The girl turned out to be faithful to Charlie's kindness. She was on his side all this time, 
and she simply deceived Cedric to gain time. She said that Charlie was much better than the Yakuza, unlike him. He was never interested in winning the game. The girl began to say only good things about the hero, that he was different from cowards like them, who only care about their loved ones. He risked his life to be here and save someone else's life. Cedric calculated the ammunition and realized that he was superior to them in equipment, which meant he had a greater chance of winning. He decided to start shooting, but nothing happened. A strange, sticky thing started leaking from the magazine. If you put a little pine sap on the tip of the magazine and load it into the machine gun, it will jam. Apparently, the Yakuza only dealt with illegal weapons. The hero was afraid that Cedric would notice this, but the girl is a skilled thief. Out of anger, he rushed towards the team's barricades for which he received a bullet in the chest. Charlie said that the Yakuza had already played, so he asked if he knew what he said on the radio to Kim. He replied that he remembered his words, but would tell them to the hero if he threw down his weapon and won with his fists. The girl thought that the Yakuza was delusional because no one would take such a risk, but the hero turned out to be the same madman and agreed. To begin with, the hero decided to see how strong the Yakuza is. Cedric used to do judo. He was good at fighting even before he joined the Yakuza. He also said that that foreigner in a white straitjacket escaped because he could not defeat him. Charlie is shocked. He himself saw how Jack died in the zone. While the hero was distracted, Cedric took aim at the hero's head, just as he wanted to say that he had won. Charlie shot off his hand with a sawn-off shotgun, which the girl used during the battle in prison. The Yakuza is not against death, because in this case the hero will not find out information about Kim. But Charlie is no longer Cedric because he now has a walkie-talkie. He pulled it out of his pocket when the enemy used a judo technique. The Yakuza did not even notice how it disappeared. The walkie-talkie is no longer useful to the hero, but thanks to the idiot, he has a voice recording. The hero uses everything at his disposal, because that's what the enemy constantly said. The moment has come when the Yakuza is finally dead and the team is now completely safe. Pinky asked the hero if they had to take her with them, because she tried to kill them, but the drug addict hugged the girl and said that girls need to stick together. The more, the merrier. While the girls were arguing about who would get Charlie, he decided where they would go. They will have to go to the largest city on this island to clear Glade. The hero was glad that Kim was waiting for him there, but he completely forgot about his first enemy, the crazy gas mask. The Yakuza for the team found a bunch of supplies, together with those they found earlier. Now it turns out to be plenty of supplies. The girl said that the Yakuza collected so much because he would have to feed too many mouths, so large groups are a bad idea. For three of them, there will only be enough supplies for two weeks. But the hero corrected and said for four. They completely forgot about Jack. He is alive and well. The Briton, as always, said with humor that the team looked disappointed. Charlie still doesn't know how Jack managed to survive, so he asked him. Jack was already tired of telling everyone this story, so he decided to simply show with a clear example rather than explain. The British theory is that after the player dies once, the chip in the body is deactivated, thus no longer affecting the body with an electromagnetic field. Charlie considered this theory to be a huge discovery. If the entire team took advantage of it, they could come out on top. The field narrows until everyone is eventually forced into one place. In other words, they have no choice but to fight. But if the team could get through the field unharmed, then they could avoid a fight while being at a disadvantage. They could just as easily get into a boat and leave the island. Charlie concluded that they would survive no matter what. But this also means that they will have to die, and this is very risky. Only a complete crazy person would do something like that. The team of those times arrived at that very place, in a clear clearing. All that was said in the recording was that Kim was hiding in this city. The hero is worried about one thing, that since that time there have been no other messages. The team needs to search the entire city, but they can't do it all together. The trunk is full of supplies and someone must remain to guard it. The hero entrusted this task to Jack because he is the strongest and craziest, besides the hero himself. At the same time, Charlie is worried that the British might leave with supplies, so another person needs to be left with him. He doesn't want to leave Pinky with him, so he leaves him to the drug addict. Before leaving, he asked not to let down his guard because he used to like killing women. Pinky asked Charlie who Kim was. They had already gone too far so the hero could safely talk about him. The hero doesn't have much to say about him. He had no real power, but he wasn't afraid to stand up to dangerous people. When she just walked away from the car, they heard strange sounds coming from her. When they came running, they saw that the girl had a bullet wound. Pinky thought that Jack killed her, but in reality this was not so. Charlie shouted to everyone to immediately start hiding, and what happened next 
you will find out in the continuation of the manga.